Well, hello and welcome to the Daily Dose of Hope. I am Chaplain Bob. Thanks so much for being here. Uh, you are watching the Daily Dose of Hope, and the Daily Dose of Hope is designed for you to come to on a daily basis to learn all about what God has for you in those 66 books that make up the Holy Bible. Now, today we're going to be in part two of what we started yesterday in the previous video. And if you did not watch our video yesterday, we invite you to go to Rumble, YouTube. You can even go on to Facebook page and please watch that because it'll make a lot more sense when you're watching this, which is part two of what we're looking at today is why do good people not go to heaven? That's the question. I mean, a, a lot of people will ask that question. Um, if you're a good person, do you automatically get into heaven? Uh, if you're a bad person, you don't get to go to heaven? I mean, what, what's the criteria there? So we're going to be looking into that, uh, and we're going to find out what Jesus had to say about us. We're not going to some self-help book or some expert. We're going to the one who wrote the Bible, God, and we're going to find out exactly what he says just after this. Let's go ahead and pray. Lord God, Mighty Father, we praise your holy name. We lift your name on high. We exalt your name. We call you Daddy, Abba Father. We say hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, Lord, for being with us today as we study your book, Matthew chapter 9. We're going to be looking at verses 9 to 13, Lord. Thank you for bringing the Holy Spirit uh, so that we can understand, so that we can have wisdom from him and that we can uh, answer the questions that maybe we've been pressing for a long time. And Lord, we want to pray for anybody that's watching right now that's going through any kind of struggles. Maybe they're having depression. Maybe they're having issues with their own lives, Lord. We pray that you would bring encouragement to them today. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you for caring for us. Thank you for being our friend and our Father in heaven. And we pray all of this in Jesus' precious holy name. Amen. Okay, again, my name is Chaplain Bob. I'm so glad to be with you today. Let's go ahead and open our Bibles to Matthew chapter 9, verses 9 to 13. And uh, this is part two of why is it that good people don't go to heaven? Okay, um, this is truth. That question, we put a question mark up there, but that really is the truth. Good people don't get to heaven. Being a quote-unquote good person, um, really, it's uh, subjective, right? It's relative. And so, why do good people, why don't they get to heaven? Well, Jesus himself is going to tell us in these verses that we're going to look at today. So, let's go ahead and look at verses 9 to 13 in Matthew 9. I have it up on the screen right over there. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax office, and he said to him, follow me. So he got up and followed him. While he was reclining at the table in the house, many tax collectors and sinners as guests to eat with Jesus and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? Verse 12. But when he heard this, when Jesus heard this, he said, Those who are well don't need a doctor, but the sick do. Verse 13. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I didn't come to call the righteous, but sinners. Okay, so Jesus lays it out there. Okay, and I'm going to read to you a quote from uh, Pastor Stephen Cole. If you were with us yesterday in our video yesterday, you know that we are using Bible.org, and we're using Stephen Cole, Pastor Stephen Cole, 30-plus year pastor. We're using his uh, some of his article that he wrote in Bible.org, and here it is up on the screen. I think you can see it now. Why do good people don't go to heaven? 
And uh, Stephen Cole, Pastor Stephen Cole, has been a pastor in California and Arizona in the United States for many years. And he wrote this article, and I thought it was intriguing. And that's kind of where we're at today, is we want to look at something that he wrote here. Um, he told a story yesterday about a pastor and a, um, and a parishioner, a do- uh, I think it was a, a judge, a Supreme Court judge in England, having a conversation. But what's on the screen highlighted there, I thought was of importance to us for us to read twice today. So we're going to read it before we break down the verses, and then we'll read it at the end so we can kind of get a perspective of what Pastor Stephen Cole was writing here. He said, Jesus taught that good people don't go to heaven. Jesus taught that, that good people don't go to heaven because their pride keeps them from admitting their need for a Savior. The only ones who go to heaven are those who see their sinfulness before a holy God and cry out to him for mercy. What will you say when you stand before God? Are you hoping to get into heaven by your goodness? Jesus didn't call the righteous. Is your hope in your God's grace towards sinners through Jesus Christ? If that's the case, then he says, you're in. Okay, so let's go back to our verses, and let's go verse by verse today in part two of why is it that good people don't go to heaven. Verse, verse, it says there in the very first line, it says, as Jesus went on from there. Okay, so Jesus has been um, teaching with his disciples. Okay, he doesn't have all of his disciples yet, and we'll see that in a minute. But he had been uh, teaching and making his way. And he saw a man who was a criminal, who's a, who's a, uh, really a white-collar thief. If you know what a white-collar thief is, that's somebody that steals um, but isn't wearing a a mask over their face. And his name was Matthew, and he was a tax collector. Now, if you know anything about the culture at this time, is there is a tax collector or a tax office right outside the synagogue. Okay, and that's where Jesus happened to be on that day. And so Jesus saw this man named Matthew sitting at the tax office, and he said to him two simple words, follow me. And Matthew did exactly what he was asked. So he got up and followed him. So here's a guy, a tax collector that more than likely is stealing from everybody, rich, poor, it doesn't matter. He's a Jew. He's working for the Romans. um, And he takes a little bit more than he should, uh, probably taking some of that and uh, giving it to some of, maybe some of the Jewish leaders. We don't know this for sure. Uh, The Bible doesn't say that but he may be giving a little bit of a bribe to the Jewish leaders. And then on top of that, he's keeping some for himself, and he's giving what's due to Caesar to Caesar, okay, to the Romans. So he's considered a criminal. I don't know what other way to put it, but he's not a good guy. Um, We ask the question here, Why is it that good people don't go to heaven? Well, Matthew, at this point in time, is not a good people. (laughs) He's not a good people. So let's look at verse 10. While he was reclining at the table in the house. Now the scene goes from Jesus asking Matthew to follow him. Matthew accepts and starts following Jesus. He gives up tax collecting and goes with the Lord. And apparently... At the Matthew doesn't explain this very well in his gospel, but Jesus was invited to go have a meal at Matthew's home. Now, who does Matthew know? He knows other tax collectors 
and he knows other people that the Bible calls sinners. Again, these are not good people, okay? So, verse 10, while he was reclining, while Jesus was reclining at the table in the house, getting ready to eat, many tax collectors and sinners came as guests to eat with Jesus and his disciples. So, a couple days ago, as a sidetrack here, a couple days ago, we preached on John chapter 2, where Jesus turns water to wine, the very first miracle uh, in the book of John, perhaps the first miracle ever uh, committed by Jesus. And Jesus was not afraid to go to a wedding for five or six days around a bunch of drunk people. And here he is, another great example of who Jesus is and how we ought to be as Christians. Jesus goes to hang out with the sinners. He doesn't go hang out with the righteous people. The righteous people in this time would have been the scribes and the Sadducees and the Pharisees. But instead, he goes to hang out with other tax collectors and, quote-unquote, according to the Bible, sinners. Okay? He's hanging out with not good people. <laughs> Does that make sense to you? He's hanging out with people that we would describe as not good people. All right? Verse 11. Now, the Pharisees, when they see this happening, they asked his disciples, uh, excuse me, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? Again, Pharisees are self-righteous. Pharisees are the righteous people of that day. They put up a mask. They pretend that they don't sin. Or if they do admit a sin, it's usually a tiny sin. They're in denial. But Jesus is hanging out with people that are not in denial. These are people that are tax collectors and sinners. I don't know what sinners exactly means in terms of what they've done, but they're sinners, meaning that they have sin in their life. And by Maybe by definition, they admit that they have sin in their life. So, what happens? Jesus is reclining, getting ready to eat. The Pharisees see this. They ask the disciples, why is he eating with tax collectors and sinners? Now, Jesus can hear everything that everybody's saying. He understands everything that they're thinking. So look at the next verse, verse 12. He says, but when he heard this, when Jesus heard this, he said, Jesus said, those who are well don't need a doctor, but the sick do. Simple sentence. Simple sentence. Those who are well don't need a doctor. How many of you have gone to the doctor when you feel great? You feel perfectly great in your life, you've gone to a doctor. Hey, doctor, how you doing? Doctor says, great. What seems to be the problem? Absolutely nothing. I'm feeling great. <laughs> Nobody does that. Nobody goes to a doctor when they're feeling well. Who goes to the doctor? The sick. So Jesus says, those who are well don't need a doctor, but the sick do. And in the very next verse, verse 13, he says, go and learn what this means. What does it mean? He said, I desire mercy and not sacrifice. Up until this time, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, the Jewish leaders of that time, they were getting rid of their sin through sacrifice. That's what the Mosaic law was all about. You have to go have a burnt offering. You have to sacrifice your very best. You got to tithe. And if you do those things, you'll get rid of the sin in your life. It'll be gone. But Jesus says, he changes the world here. He changes the dynamic here. He changes the talking points here. He says, I desire mercy and not sacrifice. Jesus Christ tells all of us all at one time, 
I want you to ask for mercy. Don't sacrifice things for me. For I didn't come to call the righteous. Here we go. I didn't come to call the righteous, but sinners. So if you go back to the previous verse, verse 12, he says, those that are well don't need a doctor. When you're healthy, when you're feeling good, you don't go to a doctor. Why? Because you're feeling great. Everything's good. There's no reason to think about a doctor when you're feeling great. But the sick go to the doctor. Because the sick know. They're humbled by their sickness. They're, they're humbled by the fact that they don't feel very good. And they realize the only way to feel better is by going to a doctor to be diagnosed, possibly receive some type of treatment. So Jesus tells us here in verse 12 and 13, I didn't come to call the righteous, but sinners. Those that are in denial about their sin will never understand that they need Jesus. They'll ignore Jesus because they don't believe what they're doing is sinful. But sinners that admit they're a sinner, those that admit that they're doing bad things in their lives, they admit it to themselves, they admit it to God, and if with a safe person, they admit it to a safe person. When they do that, those people are not in denial. They're humbled. And Jesus is the one who's saying here, I came not for the righteous, but for sinners. Now, let's go back to uh, Pastor Stephen Cole. Let's look at the highlight on the screen. Jesus taught that good people don't go to heaven because their pride keeps them from admitting their need for a Savior. Now, how many of you were in that, in that situation in your life? Where you, if you're a believer now, but you weren't before, how many of you had so much pride in your life, you didn't think you needed a Savior? You didn't think you were really sinning? It's no big deal to steal office equipment or office supplies. It's really no big deal to use foul language, bad language all the time. It's not a big deal. Everybody does it. The only ones, it goes on to say, the only ones who go to heaven are those who see their sinfulness before a holy God. When I look at myself and I realize the sin that I uh, have in my life, and I look at a holy God, God the Father, who has no sin at all, he's without sin, Jesus was without sin, the Holy Spirit's without sin. When I look at my sinfulness before a holy God and cry out to him, for mercy. Lord, I'm ready to turn away from this sin and I'm turning towards you. John 3.17 says that Jesus did not come to do any kind of judgment. He came to save. And who does he come to save? He comes to save those that will admit to themselves that they need mercy from a holy God. So, Pastor Stephen Cole asks the same question that I want to ask you. What will you say when you stand before God? Everybody is going to stand before God. Saved and unsaved, we will all stand before God. Are you hoping to get into heaven by your goodness, by being just a little bit better? Jesus didn't call the righteous. That's exactly what we learn here in these verses. And the question that Stephen Cole asks, is your hope in God's grace towards sinners through Jesus Christ? Or is your hope in something else, trying to be good or better? And that's the question I have for you. Have you made a commitment? Have you ever thought about making a commitment to God? To saying to God, 
I admit my sins. I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I've made a lot of mistakes in my life. But I want mercy, Lord. Forgive me. I'm sorry. I know I have sin in my life. And if you're a believer and you've already done that, you've already submitted yourself to God, you've already humbled yourself before God, you've already repented before God, and you know that His Son is the Savior, the question is, on a daily basis, are you still confessing sin? Because as a Christian, you will always be battling against this sinful nature that's inside of you. Because we're born into a sinful world, and our parents were both sinners, that is translated into us. And that's another reason why we need a Savior, because we are automatically sinners. And you don't think of a baby as a sinner. But you can watch babies and some of the things that they do as they grow up into children, and then teens, and then into adults, the sin continues to get worse if they don't know the Savior, and if they don't have a place to go and confess. That's why we use 1 John 1, 9 all the time. Lord, I confess my sin to you. I know, Lord, that you are faithful and just to forgive and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. We do that because that's a promise by God that God is always listening to your confession of sin. And it's a healthy thing to do on a daily basis. It helps you come out of denial. Because when you're in a sinful life or living in a sinful way, or you're stuck in a sinful pattern, many, many times you will forget that this is sinful. You just enjoy the pleasure of it or you just enjoy what's happening in that sinful desire that you have and you deny that it's a sin. But when you confess it, when you recognize it and confess it to yourself and to God and hopefully to a safe person, you can come out of that denial and face the fact that you have sinned and ask God again to cleanse you from all that unrighteousness. And that's the beauty, that's the promise of Jesus Christ. So the question is, why is it that good people don't go to heaven? Because they have too much pride. And pride gets in the way of them asking for mercy. Let's bow our heads. Lord God, Mighty Father, we thank you and praise you for loving us, caring for us, helping us to admit that we are sinners and that we do need a Savior and that we are willing to repent. We're willing to turn from the sin. We're willing to look at the cross and your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for this message over these last two days. I pray that many, many, many people will come to your Son, Jesus Christ, just the way they are, and ask Him for mercy and believe. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We pray all this in Jesus' precious holy name. Amen. So again, we have to remind ourselves as believers, or we have to remind our unbelieving friends or family members or colleagues that in order to come out of denial, we must let our pride down. If we don't, we'll stay stuck in whatever sin that we're dealing with at the latest time. All right? Understand? So it's our job to pass this on. I would love it if you share on Facebook. You share this video with people. Just push the share button and send it to your friends. Okay? Don't be shy. Just send it to your friends. If you're on YouTube or on Rumble, on Rumble, please give us a rumble. That means more people will get to see this video. If you're on um, YouTube, please give us a like and please subscribe to our channel so that more and more people can see these last two videos I think are super important for the health of us as believers or even those people that are unbelievers. It will save their lives. Okay, God bless all of you. We will see you the next time we're together, which is tomorrow. I've got a couple errands to run now, so I'm going to be taking off. Thank you for being with us. And let's listen to a little bit of Sky Liche as we say our goodbyes. Here we go.
when life keeps falling and wonder where he is in all this mess he's right there